Was there a time where you had a fight with some guy in Spar? Like with the guy who makes the sandwiches? It was in Subway. Oh, what happened? Oh my God. This uh, guy was uh, cutting the rolls in half. The person before me got like sweet onion sauce or something. And I was like, I don't want any of that. And so he went to clean the knife. And uh, his method for cleaning the knife was to wipe it under his fucking armpit. (laughs) (laughs) And... uh, (laughs) (laughs) Just saw red start giving out to him. Um, The fucking cheek. That has to be breaking many codes. Like, that's no good for him, either. Yeah. Having, you know... (laughs) bang a fucking ranch up his armpit. (laughs) And did he understand what he did, or...? I get the impression from his reaction that this was a normal thing for him, because he was kind of shocked when I said it to him. You know, he was like, Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Bit of a prima donna here. (laughs) Here's your fucking clean sandwich, your majesty. (laughs) (laughs) Hello and welcome to OSW Reviewed, the old school wrestling video podcast. Filmed in glorious Grapple Vision and encoded with blast processing, we chronologically critique wrestling storylines pay-per-view by pay-per-view. This is your host, your boy, Jay Hunter. Joined as ever with Mr. OC and V1. That's the story. It's episode 64, TNA Lockdown 2007, and it's coming up right now. Stephen, how are you? I'm good. What's the crack, Jay? Story. <laughs> <laughs> the crack is fine. <laughs> how's the trick, Steve? Not too bad. Yeah, very good. So, Steve, you're full time now. I am. Yes. It is happy days. <laughs> Jay had something, did he? No, no. I was just ho- hoping you'd keep that going longer than four seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Back on Irish shores after our trip to Orlando. Guys, what do you think of America? Fabulous. It was an incredible week. Amazing fans. Everyone is is just incredible. Except for that one. Not everyone is just incredible. (laughs) (laughs) There's only one. Thanks fucking Christ. (laughs) At Cerberus23 did an amazing job cutting our NXT and Mania 33 holiday podcast to video. Yeah, incredible. Fair play. Cheers, mate. Where's uh, Raw? (laughs) <laughs> uh, they're up on oswreview.com and on Nugger U our new film review of the original Alien from 1979 is up oh yeah as well as the video from our live show and Q&A awesome fantastic anyway we're back in the dizzy highs terrifying lows and creamy <laughs> middles of 2007 TNA News coming out of lockdown was that there were two worst match of the year contenders. I <laughs> <laughs> couldn't possibly be right. Was it warranted? Let's find out. Nine one one operator, what's your emergency? It's time for your pre-show main event. It's not Georgia Gold Honey Mustard Barbecue because TNA can't get sponsors. (laughs) (laughs) It's BG and Kip James with Tramp Stamp Hoyt versus Christy Hemi's mystery team. Turns out it's two-thirds of Serotonin, which is Raven's flock in TNA, who were just mercilessly jobbed out Mm. all the time. Was Jimmy Rave in that? Yeah, initially. Mm. And uh, Maverick Matt Bentley. 
I always hated him. I just didn't like him. <laughs> I didn't like his face. <laughs> so it's Kaz and Havoc, a.k.a. Johnny Devine, and Martyr, a.k.a. Maverick Matt Bentley. He's not wrestling, but he comes out too because he doesn't want to be left out. <laughs> uh, there with Christy Hemi wearing, holy fuck, this dress made out of white curtains. Yes. Nice. Oh, fuck. It was hot. Yeah. Have you turned the corner? Oh, like she looks like a streetwalker, but that doesn't mean that she's not crazy hot. Like, let's say she comes up to you in a bar. <laughs> hey, Jay, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> and then come back. This angle has gone down pretty quickly, hasn't it? Like <laughs> the pre-show. Like. Yeah. Last month they were, you know, like a featured match on the main card. She got promo time. They had a post-match angle. And you're on the pre-show. You and fucking Boner Douche. <laughs> Danny Boner Douche. It's been a while. It's been a while. 29-year-old Kazarian bumps around Kip James. Very impressive. What's Kip got? Shit stunner. Hot Tag runs wild, throws Kaz into the cage. Kaz gets his head stuck in the cage, it was on the hard camera. Actually, looked great. Billy's not jumping for a rocker dropper, so he does a hit knee and into his one Billy Gun finisher. What was his name? He had a gimmick name for the it. The one and only. Oh, oh, this oh, man. Man. Look at him. There we go. Hey, whoa, the one and only. <laughs> <laughs> AKA the Cobra Clutch Slam. Also fittingly called the Missouri Boat Ride. We're in Missouri. And the 123 absolutely demolished the lads. Steamroll in 340. Oh, God. And the valiant chauvinist baby faces taunt Christy, and that's that. <sighs> Actually, post match, Raven comes out, as he always would, to punish his job squad for jobbing. Swerve, he wants to punish slash kendo stick Christy, but Kaz has none of it and ends up taking her lashes instead. Isn't that nice? Hmm. More VKM and Kaz next time on Hard Justice because they both get featured. Nice. But for now, let's start the show. Prisms. Since early history, they have been built by man to house the dark souls of society. Man has been held captive by something more crippling than a prison his own self. My own prison, my own prison. <laughs> Should have been there on a Sunday morning, banging my head. No devil, no devil, no devil, no devil. Are we the only three people in the world who put Creed over? <laughs> yeah. Every episode. <laughs> <sighs> this is a WWF late 90s promo. Yeah. You know the way TNA hired Russo and Angle late 2006 and over the years they just become like a graveyard for ex-WWF and WCW <laughs> talent? Like, they actually hired their video producer too, David Zahadi. So he's uh, mm. responsible for all those classic pay-per-view movie trailer opening video packages where they try to make the matches and feuds seem as grand and as high stakes as possible and life-changing and all that. He also made the... Do you remember in the Attitude Era, they'd have these kind of black and white vignettes with Freddie Blassie and the big lad, Ernie Cat? <laughs> the big lad. <laughs> and it's like, you know, they don't cheer for me. Uh, I cheer they for them. They were great, yeah. actually. Yeah, they were really, really good. good. That one there is actually, when Vince saw it, he started crying and stuff like that. Oh. You know? um, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> So he was hired from 92, but by the time 2003 rolled around, that's the Katie Vick era, and he just said, fuck that, I'm out. Really? So he, he like, he walked? Yeah, so he quit, he went hiking for a year, came back, there's a fucking message from Jeff Jarrett, they became mates, and he's like, yeah, sure, I'll join TNA. When he came on board, it's jumping production quality or across the board. It's much better than anything we've ever seen in uh, WCW, and it got me kind of hyped for the show. Yeah, it just feels like it. WWE promo, but it's for TNA, so no, mm. ain't no bad thing there. <laughs> Pain is guaranteed. Misery is inevitable. <laughs> it's lockdown. Th- he actually says that. <laughs> it's lockdown 2007. April 15th, to be specific, from the home of the Arch, the gateway to the West, St. Louis, Missouri. Bollocks. That's the first lie tonight. 
the family arena is in St. Charles, Missouri, and it's half an hour's drive from St. Louis. Oh. The old Ryanair booking there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paris Bove. <laughs> <laughs> Attendance tonight is a great for TNA 6000, because this is their first non bound for glory pay-per-view outside the impact zone. With approximately 35,000 plebeians locking down piles of pennies, which is also great. Their biggest ever, Angle Joe won 60,000. Mm. After eardrum bursting pyro, the lads welcome us and run down the card. Commentators tonight are Don West and Iron Mike Tenay. So tonight, every match will be contested in a cage. Yay. Thank you, Dusty. <laughs> Did you know his idea was to put just the main two matches in a cage? And then in a production meeting, he joked, ah, every match should be in a cage. And Dixie went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? And so the whole, this staple, this like third biggest TNA pay-per-view of the year, based on a joke. Oh my god. Too hot to handle and too cold to hold. We throw backstage to Jay Lethal doing his macho man gimmick, Black Machismo, interviewed by Letitia. He actually calls her Liz. <laughs> Which is great, but she actually calls him Jay Lethal and he has to correct her and like, Black Machismo. God, I love you. would one, one fucking job. She didn't even get dressed up to go to work today. Either. She just yeah. wore jeans and a t-shirt, right? Straight out of sunglasses. <laughs> 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 and it harkens the next matchup. Oh yeah, dig it! Our inaugural contest is a five-way cage match for the X Division Championship. This is pretty much a staple of TNA pay-per-views. Multiman X Division spot fest ain't no bad thing. Black Machismo, he mega powers handshakes with Nash. I love that. <laughs> Nash, done for the night. Pay me. <laughs> Nash also didn't bother to get dressed up for this show. <laughs> That's what I fucking hate about TNA. People don't get dressed up. Fair enough if you're backstage, but not if you're coming out to the crowd like. Yeah. At this time, Kevin Nash was mostly a backstage personality that hung around the X Division. He came back to TNA in 2006 and became mates with Alex Shelley, telling everyone he was the most profitable WWF World Heavyweight Champion of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Tongue in cheek. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, he did make a graph that shows how successful he was, <laughs> which is amazing. R- rumor has it he took uh, DJ Hyde's graph. <laughs> <laughs> and flipped it. <laughs> uh, it obviously is quite hilarious because it's literally the opposite. Diesel being the worst drawing WWF champion of all time up to that point. And he called the X Division basically filler. Uh, see, Nash is infamous for bashing smaller wrestlers like Benoit and Malenko and Guerrero, calling them vanilla midgets. He battered the X Division wrestlers. Never got pinned, obviously, and formed the paparazzi production stable with Shelley and cameraman Johnny Devine. He'd even make his paparazzi championship series, which is basically an excuse to hang around backstage and film funny vignettes with the X Division talent. Such as them playing musical chairs. Very good, which very is good. Actually, lots of fun. Of course, it's burying the entire roster, but uh, it was good out crack. Included paparazzi idol, where Lethal did a spot on impression of the Macho Man. Let me tell you, Hulky talked me and said I can't sing and I can't dance, but I can make romance, yeah. And in order to get these wrestlers, who were awesome wrestlers, but they had kind of bland personality, to get them to come out of their shell, Nashi gave Sanjay and Lethal gimmick makeovers, Dutt becoming the guru in July, and as you can see here, Lethal going full-on macho parody as Black Machismo. You know, it's kind of mixed. It kind of made Lethal actually have a gimmick, set Tim aside from most of the kind of average generic wrestlers but he's just a parody gimmick he's still just ripping off macho man he's never going to get himself over yeah you can never build on this character no no but he did have some amazing scenes with flair that are like some of tna's best ever promos well yeah he so he went from parodying macho man to parodying rick flair yeah you guys as far as i'm concerned are no Horseman, that is disrespectful to me and this wrestling business. 
he is amazing at Ric Flair. It's so funny. And Flair flips out because he has to maintain being the heel and stuff. But he's going, wow, wow, that's my life. (laughs) (laughs) Tonight, you're going to find out that jumping on is a lot easier than jumping on. Wow, that's my line. 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 Give me a shell, yeah. Shark Boy. Pre shell, yeah. This is before his Stone Cold parody gimmick. Which uh, he was also great yeah, at. I think that was better than Lethal's gimmicks. It's really impressive, yeah. Although the difference, like, he still dressed like Shark Boy yeah. when he was doing it. But he had the waistcoat. <laughs> yeah. He did. <laughs> Hilarious. He had the Jay Hunter waistcoat. <laughs> <laughs> ten on You're ten. You're going to get that over, Jay. Yeah. It's all yeah, way over it's already. already. Over. You burying it only gets it yeah, more I know. over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very much bargain basement WWE here. So Lethal with his macho parody, Shark Boy with the Stone Cold parody, then Lethal does a Flare parody, then you have Little Petey Pump. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So shit, lads. It's Come up with sad. your own gimmicks, yeah, please. Yeah. Although, don't, because they're still very entertaining. Yeah. Steve, what the is Shark Boy? Well, Jay, Shark Boy is wearing his traditional gear, which is blue, white, black, and red. So, of Ooh. course, he is a Cornetto King Cone. Oh, yes. Very highbrow uh, ice cream. <laughs> Fucking awesome ice cream. I had one there a couple of days ago and I was like, oh, Shark Boy. <laughs> I'm sure there is some kind of shark based ice cream. You know, not, not, taste, not taste wise, be. but, you know, color, color. You know, like that Sonic uh, ice cream. Yes. Oh, my God. Have you seen some of the like <laughs> oh ones that people pull out? He's like, he's like melted face <laughs> Sonic. <laughs> Paparazzi Productions' Alex Shelley and then pre-love guru Sanjay Dutt with a horrendous noise theme. Thank you. I have this exactly written here. It's one of the worst themes ever. It's just... me. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's like that bit in Dumb and Dumber. Like uh, when they're the in the The most car. annoying noise ever. <laughs> <laughs> And current X Division champion Chris Sabin. Sabin and Dot kick off with an X Division sploosh exchange. Hurricane Rana roll through, escape, head scissors, reversal onto the shoulders, shoot off, rewind back up, twist into a DDT. Awesome. This is why I loved watching TNA back at this time. You'd never see this in the WWE. You still don't see this in the WWE. The storyline of the match is that Sabin and Shelley, both heels, who are champion and challenger, are oddly working together. From avoiding fighting each other, commentators noting how similar their personalities are, and them straight up including some of their amazing future tag team tandem offense. These guys weren't tagging yet, mm. but they're doing their machine gun stuff. It's awesome. Cheryl, you <laughs> sorry. Tag yourself in and jump into a top rope sunset flip powerbomb. Oh, would you know about this uh, with Shark Boy as well? He got a big, massive payout because Miramax did that film, Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Oh, right. And sure, he had uh, copyrighted it from like 99 or something, or 96. Nice. Or something. Yeah, settled out of court and like, uh, pff, don't need to do indies anymore. There Good go. man. Well done. Happy yeah, for congrats, mate. He's like, I'm going to play golf. <laughs> <laughs> Someone teach me golf. <laughs> I should learn to play. <laughs> I love how choreographed X Division matches are. It can be bad if it's too obvious. Like Shark Boy delivers two knees to get Saban to tag out because that's what they had booked. But it's awesome if they have like really interesting sequences, which mm. they almost always do. Like Shark Boy evading a machine gun's double team. And I love Saban and Shelley's. They do their friendly chest pump. Yes. Their jock douchebags. <laughs> chest pump. Nee, nee, nee. Me, me, nee, me, nee. me. <laughs> As is their best friend's side hug into a tandem leg drop and splash combo. I loved it. It was like friends forever. They hold each other Friends forever. <laughs> so that tag team offense eliminates Shark Boy and uh, thumbs to Saban. Machismo's in with his horrendous frosted tips. They're bad. With the geese split. Oh, yeah. Fuck. It's really bad hair. Perhaps a nod to uh, 2001 Michael Cole. 
Hold the foot and super jawbreaker to lethal. Poetry in motion boost to dropkick dot. Gets rightful this is awesome chance and TNA chance. Sabin follows up with a Garvin stomp from noon to midnight. Mm. I just say how awesome it is to watch the fucking guns. They're so fast, they're so smooth, they're so good. Everything they do is awesome. They come up with cool new moves that no one else does. I could watch these guys wrestle all day. And they're good characters. They're entertaining outside the ring. They're cocky heel stuff. They got good gimmick, everything, yeah. Ticks all the boxes. I was just thinking about because, you know, I marvel at the guy. Oh my God, it's so good to them. What makes an amazing tag team is like three things. Great character, great psychology, and just tag team tandem offense yes, together. Yes, that's what tag team yeah. is all about. And they've got the three of them yeah. together. Yeah. So. Well, probably not the psychology so much. They just kind of go into well. video game mode. Like. <laughs> but their offense is like a 10 S rating. <laughs> nice. Heels, Shelly and Sabin work together, so the faces react by also working together. Machismo wants in, so hilariously Lethal just hip tosses Dutt into his corner so he can tag himself in. Mm, it was cool. Sploosh, Machine Gun's signature offense. Lethal takes an inverted atomic drop, missile dropkick to his shins, so he's on the ground. Shelly flips over and pulls Lethal's head up, leaving him prone for a missile dropkick to the face. Then a video game chain sequence by Dutt, Hurricane Rana, Shin double dropkick, Shining Wizard, and gorgeous springboard moonsault, and jaw jacks with referee Andrew Thomas over the two, showing his lovely Roy de Bacney. Mm. He's too skinny to have this. I know. What's, what, what's that about? Like he just loves banging the roids out of me, just <laughs> but he doesn't do anything. <laughs> Instead of milk, he just uses roids <laughs> in the cereal. <laughs> Flurry of awesome into cradle shock eliminates dot. So it's down to champion Sabin, Shelly, and Lethal. Machismo hits his combo backbreaker into faceplant. And then a CM Punk level naff elbow drop to Shelly. Yeah, it's pretty geek. And that's enough to end his participation. So TNA are looking to pair Sabin and Shelly, so they completely avoid the scenario of what had happened with Sabin versus Shelly. So it's down to our final two, champion Sabin and Jay Lethal. What's that? The referee leaves the cage as the match has suddenly turned into an escape x escape x escape match. <laughs> the cage step. It's convoluted. Listen, be thankful no one got their hair cut at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Finish of the match. Oh, hilarious. Sabin and Lethal, they both let each other get up and over to the outside of the cage. It's fucking SmackDown versus Raw. <laughs> Definitely PS2 era technology here. Sneaky, smarty pants Sabin kicks Lethal's leg out of his leg so he goes between the large cage mesh, trapping him long enough for Sabin to drop down and retain his belt in 1550. What, he couldn't have dropped down before he kicked him in his legs out of his leg? Yeah, Yeah, they were both climbing down and I'm like, just drop, just drop. And then they're both trying to hit each other, which will potentially make the other one drop to the floor. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> another one of OC's cafe breakers. <laughs> you know, there was actually another stip in this match. The winner must leave St. Louis, but they uh, never show Chris Steven leaving. But he wasn't in St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> and did they mean leave? Okay, I was going home anyway, lads. And <laughs> yeah, I, I don't plan to stay <laughs> yeah, here. I don't live here. <laughs> fantastic pay-per-view opener so effortless with these incredibly talented wrestlers overflowing with ideas for cool sequences and nonchalantly crisp execution ecstatic to finally get these lads on an osw episode simple effective storyline of two heels with alliance in a multi-man match that builds intrigue to what would become of that over the summer they'd officially team up as the murder city machine guns Mm. And I remember Shelly and I were pissed off because it was PGI's as the Motor City Machine Guns uh, with Kevin Nash as their manager, as they're all from Detroit and their mates. Yeah, my favourite tag team of all time. They're fucking amazing. Yeah. So, uh, so what do you think of the match? It was great. All through this era, there's loads of great matches like this. You know, throw a load of X Division lads in the ring and just let them go nuts. And that's what they did. So it was possibly not the greatest X Division match, but it was a thoroughly enjoyable, what was it, 15 minutes? One thing I didn't like was that Sanjay Dutt got very little ring time and he would have been my favourite X-Division wrestler at the time. The end was a bit of an anti-climax. Both climbed out and... Go to finish, go to finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still thoroughly enjoyable. Mm. Yes, an excellent wrestling match. But I just thought the timing of the match was very strange. You go six or seven minutes with no pins 
And then once uh, Shark Boy is pinned, then it's like Dutt's gone, Shelley's gone. The pacing just kind of got faster and faster as the match went on. Ooh, like a slasher flick, Steve. Yes, but I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> like a slasher flick. <laughs> uh, I just thought that the match could have done with a few extra minutes to like breathe a bit. Once it got to the last two, they just both jump up to the top. Bit of a smelly ending, so. <laughs> Mixed bag. Excellent wrestling shite booking. With there not being any crazy spots in this match, I think throughout the pay-per-view, they just told them, don't use the cage. Because they only use the cage in really... Two the, matches, Yeah, really. two matches. Yeah, yeah. Just the featured bout, so... Maybe mm. it's to prevent fatigue. Okay, fair enough. But can I can think of a different way to do it. Don't have every match in the cage. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Backstage with Team Cage, Steiner does the uh, repeat what Christian says deal. Did you like this? It's like a big guy in the back who just repeats one of the, the main word of the last sentence. Respect. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this business has always been about three things. Money, power, and respect. Respect. <laughs> yeah, we're going to win this. we got the match in the bag. Match in the bag. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christian calls Abyss an imbecile, which Jim Mitchell allows, you know. Aww. He gloats about dissension. Smellness. In the babyface team, thanks to the addition of infiltrator Jeff Jarrett, and they get over the main event stipulation. Whoever gets the pinfall gets a title shot next month against Christian. Sinister Minister, straight-faced, tells AJ if he gets a title shot, then Abyss's mother goes to jail. <laughs> <laughs> If you get the title shot, then his mother goes to prison. Halt! None shall cross into Canada with that. Oh, never mind. I've seen your passport. Match number two is Robert Roode versus P.D. Williams fighting for the honor of Eric Young. So all three of these lads are from the former heel stable Team Canada. Set it off as a World X Cup team, as every year TNA would hold either a team tournament or an X Division tournament that features both TNA and non-TNA talent. Like Team Mexico had AAA wrestlers and Team Japan had New Japan wrestlers. For Team Canada, Coach Scott Demore initially brought in OC's team, Teddy Hart. Oh my God. Jack Evans. Oh my God. <laughs> P.D. Williams yeah. and Johnny Devine. I have well, no idea who that two is. Two out of four. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I love P.D. as well, but holy shit. This is where it's at. Like, I mean, did they have matches? They had cats in matches. <laughs> <laughs> Was it this the, the match where Teddy Hart kept on climbing the cage and doing <laughs> moonsaults and just to get himself over and got himself sacked? No, no, it wasn't in TNA. It was just uh, some indie show. Yeah. Okay. He did okay. it until he vomited. It's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> what a fucking carny. But he could also cut promos. He was the most talented at it. Like, it was sad they got Tyson Kidd and D.H. Smith because, like, Teddy Hart was the one you want. He's yeah. he, he's the star here, you know? <laughs> Imagine, instead of, like, ring posts, they'd have, like, cat posts. <laughs> the, scratch, the, the, the scratching posts? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and later they brought in EY and Bobby Roode. Of course, they never won. It was usually Team America, World Police. Uh, so they split, Demore blaming Eric Young. Do you think I should be fired? No! So EY was worried about his job security, so he started a grassroots babyface campaign to rouse fan support with the slogan, Don't fire Eric. Don't fire Eric. Which endeared him to the crowd. His paranoia was founded, actually, as when Cornette came into power, he said someone's going to get fired. And so he's like, oh, shit, it's me. Turned out to be Earl Hebner for a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> but Larry Zbysko, when he was in charge as well, he actually did fire him. But he managed to worm his way back in and get a job. Fire! Fire! Fast forward a few months and Eric Young is under Robert Roode's employ. Why does Rude want his services? Because he wants to be popular and loved, like EY. How so? By berating him. <laughs> <laughs> what a preposterous I love heels. Reasoning. They're so great. 
Rude's manager, Miss Brooks, screwed EY, sadly only figuratively, and Bobby bought his TNA contract and is treating him like his personal slave. And we get a nice look at his chores. Wash car, take out trash, vacuum up popcorn. (laughs) EY can't just quit or hit Rude, as if he does, he can't work in TNA. Uh, So Eric Young's old buddy from Team Canada sticks up for him, P.T. Williams. So now we've got this match. From Wall Street in Manhattan, New York, it's... Glorious! Bobby Roo! I have a what smokes for this match for Bobby Roo. And uh, glorious Bobby Roo comes to the ring... Oh, wait, does he have his jocks on or off at this point? Uh, robe on or off? Robe off. Okay. Does he have his jocks <laughs> on or off? <laughs> Steve, what smokes is Bobby Roo? Well, lads, Bobby Roode is wearing a lovely little green and white getup. Marble menthol. He could be, but he's a pack of consulates. Splicey, splicey. Yeah, yeah. Is okay. this like a... a They're old school mental. A dignitary, you know, 15% tar kind of <laughs> <laughs> He barks at EY and tells him to set our side in front of this guy in a Mr. Ass t-shirt. I used to have that t-shirt. Did you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Why? P- the pinnacle was the king of the ring 99, you know? <laughs> Mr. Ross needed all the support he, he could get. King of the Ring. I forgot about that. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Opened up a wound. <laughs> Do you remember Edge used Billy Gunn as a verb when he was going to win the King of the Ring title? Don't worry, I want Billy Gunn this title. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I don't care how accurate it is. <laughs> EY thought he did a great job of looking sad and indignant. Kind of, he's perpetually browbeaten by Miss Brooks, and he looks sad. Yeah. Know? PD with some sweet opening flourishes, but this is a bland, straight wrestling match, making no use of the cage or involving the crowd. Of note, smooth boost up into the corner, and PD jumps back into a Hurricane Rana. That was beautiful, mm. graceful, like a swan. <laughs> back to the well where the second time doesn't work, consummate pro Bobby Roode refuses to sell a dropkick that doesn't connect. I loved it. Well done, mate. Veteran poise here. Because he'd look like a clown <laughs> if he did sell it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. He's like, you fucked up. I'm doing a move now. Pete even tries to kick him. No, no, you fucking take this spine buster. Take this. Yep. Yeah. Also, Petey Williams hits a DDT to Bobby Roode. Oh my God, he sells it beautifully. Already esque again. Like, awesome. Rude slows it down. Actually, what do you think of this now that Rude does his chin locker? What do you think of the cage in general? I think it looks cooler. You can see it better. And I'm sure it's a lot easier to actually work in this cage than it is on the chicken fence wire. Thumbs up. Hmm. But it's like the old blue cage in WWF. Yeah. 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 I think it's lar- larger holes. Oh, okay. Actually, <laughs> what's the opposite of that, Steve? Rude hits a big rock bottom, and that's Mrs. Brooke. Miss Brooks. She's not married, is she? No, Ms. Ms. Yeah, Brooks. Ms. Cue to retrieve a hockey stick for him. But EY scuppers that. A furious Brooks hurls abuse at EY while trying to keep her ginormo fake tits from popping out. EY pushes over Brooks. Massive pop for the male on female violence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Say go ahead. TNA fans don't respect the ladies. Ah, this is Eric, though. I mean, it's a face giving a heel come up and here. Yeah, you know? but he and he's so kind of do- he's like um, you know of mice and men. The Lenny, is it Lenny? Yes. That, you know he he kills the woman. Have you not read of mice and men? <laughs> oh, are you fucking Maybe cretins? Literally twenty years ago. <laughs> oh my god. Should uh, have a basic grasp of... Uh, <laughs> John Steinbeck <laughs> to do a wrestling podcast, surely. Um, so tell me about Le- Lenny Lenford here. <laughs> uh, that, no, that was it. I just Everyone else will know, don't worry. Excellent, yeah, excellent. Fine. Yeah. Will they? All of the fans will know. Yeah. Yes. Yes. If anyone doesn't know, put a comment on the fucking... <laughs> if they don't know, out <laughs> yourself. <laughs> 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 Oh, 
Now, I hope it was Lenny. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, Cut that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if it's not, I'm going to say the other name, and then you can spicy that in. <laughs> we'll have to, like, audio conference you. <laughs> I think we're talking yeah, about... Yeah, it's like from Mice Dooley. and Men when... Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> when the mouse... <laughs> At this time, TNA were negotiating with Spike to get a second hour of impact, which was successful. But a couple of weeks after lockdown, they pissed off Spike big time by having Jared hit Miss Brooks. And they were like, rah, 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 rah. never again. But do what you want on pay-per-view. Wow, okay. And we will. <laughs> Vince Russo <laughs> once took Tracy Brooks aside and told her to pretend to faint during a Robert Roode pay-per-view match. Why? Like, what? <laughs> What would be the point? Gotta work the boys. Oh, <laughs> my God. Because if she had fainted and nobody reacted or helped her, she'd just kind of have to get up and pretend it didn't happen. Actually, I'm all right. <laughs> Why did you do that? <laughs> I'm just trying to get some attention. <laughs> Petey uses the hockey stick. Uh, why do you need a hockey stick in a steel cage, man? <laughs> Use the cage. <laughs> <laughs> the can't. It's for the main eventers. <laughs> He can only take, like, ten hits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, the cage has a little fucking health bar or something like that that goes down with every hit, you know? Root sandbags, the big spot of the match, and Alabama slams Petey, who bottled taking that bump. He did the Alabama slam, and he just kind of, whoa, <laughs> into the corner. Spider breath. <laughs> But is absolutely fine taking a perfect plex, aka the payoff for the one, two, three, and glorious is victorious in ten fourteen. So they tease the Canadian destroyer yet again, and I know that's a gimmick. Just break it out sometimes. I know that's what you're going for here, but you're really pissing me off, and probably <laughs> other people watching. Ten years later, <laughs> you're furious. I just want to see the fucking move, Steve. You have to bear in mind that this is TNA booking, right? So. Most wrestling shows use their weekly TV to build up to the main event of the pay-per-view, but TNA used the pay-per-view <laughs> to get you to watch Thursday Impact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guarantee you he does four every month. <laughs> and then when you pay to watch the show, uh-uh-uh, uh-uh-uh. <laughs> yeah, good logic, Steve. Good logic. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. It was all right. Two solid workers who, despite being given nothing to do, still managed to kind of eke out a decent match. Nothing memorable, but nothing bad. Solid. I thought it was a well-worked match. Both these guys are good. Brood, wrestling an X-Division wrestler, limiting then what P.T. Williams is going to do. Probably would have been better if the cage wasn't there. Mm. But overall, um, it was kind of like an Impact main event, but... I wasn't uh, disappointed by it. I just w- noticed one thing. The Spanish announce table wasn't much of a table. Did you notice? They <laughs> Wait, they, well, what did they have? They just like had a coffee table. Uh, yeah. <laughs> have a look back. They <laughs> did they have get, to stretch them? Yeah, they were going to pick up lean, the notes. Leaning like. forward. Yeah, have a look at that. Yeah. <laughs> just felt bad for them. <laughs> I sh- thought worse of it. Like a, a cold match. No heat in it. That's it. Second match on the card. It's fine for a second match on the card. You know, you have to bring the crowd down, you know? <laughs> Get them used to it. Like, <laughs> we've got to go way down. <laughs> we can spelunking later oh. on. Like. Women, what are they? <laughs> Our next contest is a cage match. Gail Kim versus the pride of Tennessee, Miss Jackie Moore. Valets of James Storm and Chris Harris have their own spin-off feud. AMW are up later on tonight. Where are they feuding? Stand by your man. And also, Miss Jackie calls Gail Kim a no-good slut. Fucking Russo. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Russo. <laughs> Barry Scott gets his video package going and he calls it officially It's a Six Sides of Steel catfight. A Six Sides of Steel (laughs) catfight. They literally call this women's match a catfight because (laughs) 
Hopper, hopper. Well done, Jay. Well awesome. Well done. It was very difficult to hold laughing until hubba yeah. hubba. Yeah. <laughs> Did you enjoy Jackie's velvet onesie with the midriff cut out? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> What's there to enjoy? I thought she looked like a Teletubby. <laughs> a little bit. A Teletubby. Yeah. Poe, I believe, was the red one. Yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Pratt falls down the ramp and the bell rings to start the match. What? <laughs> you can win this match by escaping the cage. So if Jackie throws Gale into the ring, ding, 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 <laughs> <laughs> match over. <laughs> Jackie hoofs Gale onto Tanae's open arms. He's very careful to keep his hands to himself. His shocked face is hilarious. And then you can just see like Jackie just laughing to herself. It's like, so I take it that these worked out this spot and they were like, this is going to be hilarious. He knows nothing about it. Filthy old fecker. <laughs> <laughs> Gail no sells a water bottle shot and has it dumped over her. Oh, that's pretty hot. This is something. Wet hair is very sexy. It's very mm. hot. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> uh, the commentators sell it as disgusting, but it's water, and she's a performing athlete. <laughs> it would be refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> and brawl around to ring announcer slash backstage reporter SoCal Val, and fuck. See, you saw this woman in the crowd holding this sign. Women shouldn't wrestle because they can't. A woman And a this? woman has this sign. A woman! <laughs> <laughs> a woman and a woman! Fuck! And fuck you holding that in front of Gail Kim. Yeah. In a fucking era where 90% of women's re- wrestlers could not wrestle, Gail Kim was in a league of her own. I can't believe I missed that. I would have been furious if I had <laughs> seen that. I probably would have had to have paused the pay-per-view and go back the next day. After seeing that sign, like I was like, oh, I really want to rally for the women. But Jackie hits a shit clothesline, followed up by a fuck was that push into the ropes and both start selling. Mm. And then Jackie Germans Gale onto her head. What? <laughs> the TNA director misses it completely. Oh, yeah. So uh, fucking hell, lads. Come on. Gale with a top rope sunset flip and... <laughs> Skillfully done, sir, as Jackie hulas to the turnbuckle for leverage and pins Gale. Gale with a perfect top rope missile dropkick, followed up with the massive camel toe. <laughs> Holy shit. Boys, I wasn't lying for all these years. I told you I <laughs> expressly remembered this. He was huge. Yeah. You can't not see it. And then once you see it, you can't unsee it. <laughs> you ruined this match for me, though, because that's all I was looking out for. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. When yeah. does it happen? Yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> actually fucking rides into Egypt here. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Gail smashes the cage door on Jackie's face, but does the dumb baby face thing of not taking the easy win, but instead shuts the door and scales the cage. Top of the cage splash! Miss! <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Moore, yeah. she was in the perfect place, and then she steps forward and misses, and ruins... The finish of the match. If, well, not, it doesn't anything, ruin it. But it was already done it. like no, that, this match, if, I think. If, if anything, it was actually a more effective splash because she splashed Jackie in the face. But she didn't, like, land on the face. No, she didn't. It was kind she of a like, yeah. 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 And that's what the commentators try to hide it as, you know. But they kept showing replays. <laughs> they slow it down. <laughs> 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 Tanae covers that it was a glancing knockout to the head. Gail hugs Don West, but only shakes hands with Tanae. It's like, fuck you then. Why, wow. why, why is that, Steve? Because Tanae is a... A dirty elf. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what, what did you think of this match? It's fine. The end spot, I mean, it, Gail jumping off the top of the cage was awesome, but completely ruined. It's just a shame. It was all right. It's better than most women's matches during this era of US wrestling. But it still wasn't great. But Camel Toe, 10 out of 10. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's actually a really fair point to note, is that, like, 
women's wrestling today kind of had its renaissance a couple of years ago, you know, whatever, 2014 with yeah. NXT and spilled over onto the main roster. But in 2007, women's wrestling was in the pits. Beth and, Phoenix. And everyone, Hall of Famer Beth Phoenix, yeah. still talking. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, yeah, so women's wrestling at the time was in the shitter and like Gail Kim uh, they ended up beating the Sorry. fucking forget it forget it <laughs> unbelievable and there you see Tracy Brooks holding the hand of the voodoo queen Roxy Laveau here our boy JB in lockdown red and black is backstage as 57 year old Bob Backland wanders into camera shot in a why are you calling him Bob Backland why? What's his name? Duck arse, isn't it? Oh, don't worry. I, I have to say it properly once. Wah, 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 wah. The Hollywood fashion plate here in a navy blue shirt and red bow tie and suspenders with dark slacks. He's supposed to look like a classic 80s ref. Whilst he's technically correct, I just think he looks like a vagrant. <laughs> Do you remember that time Jake Roberts came back on Raw when Randy was still the, the legend killer and he had oh, Jesus. the fucking tracksuit on? He was wearing the same thing as Randy. <laughs> and Randy looks really nice in his shirt and his slacks. Put it this way, he looked more homeless than I did <laughs> in that picture Steve took. Splicey. Splicey. <laughs> Duck Arse whispers so softly into the mic and there's no audio revelation so he actually can't hear what he's saying. It's horrific. Something effervescent going on around here. There's something synergistic between the plebeians and Mr. You see that lady? No, not that lady. The other one. <laughs> you see her? It took TNA years to spring for a boom mic. <laughs> so the microphones they actually use are live mics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> They're not props like in WWE. He calls us plebeians and dodges answering if he'll call the next matchup down the middle and threatens JB with a bent finger. <laughs> 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 this rear, rear with the finger. <gasps> Real molesty vibe off it. <laughs> Match number four is a return bout from Destination X, but in a cage. It's Senshi versus Austin Star with special referee crazy old coot Mr. Backland out first. DW postulates, what would happen if they did a brain scan on him? Tanae quips, it might come back empty. <laughs> <laughs> by, by the way, you have ruined Senshi for me now. Really? Yeah, gully bully. That's all I think now. I re wrote it down. <laughs> gully bully! Oh, no! <laughs> Why don't you go and swim <laughs> 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 Backlund gives us a bit of duck arse just before uh, Sanchi comes and steals his spotlight. He is. <laughs> Aries outlast. Oh, what have they done to you, mate? Oh. Yeah. Uh, what do you make of his uh, look, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He still has kind of the ring gear. It's just his grew his hair out and cut his fucking facial hair. That's about it, right? He's, no, he's blown out his hair like. So, yeah, yeah, it's not great. Like, Backland frisks Aries, looking for foreign objects, and afterwards, Aries presents his arse, his duck arse. Uh, whose face and heel? They show you. Senshi backs Aries into the corner and gives him a clean break, but Aries sucker punches him for it. There you go. Show don't tell. Oh, I love Senshi's sweeping corkscrew elbow. He, like, kind of sweeps his leg and then elbow. Awesome. So, uh, Mr. Harvard step test here. Mr. Backland, he's he, he's mates with Senshi. So, you're wondering how is this fair for him to be a special guest referee? The fucking baby face has the advantage in this match. <laughs> That's Russo booking. But uh, as Loki delivers chops in the corner, Backland shows he's not playing favourites by pulling Senshi off to break the attack. Good stuff. Show, don't tell. Oh, yeah. There you go. World Warrior gets into position and so does Ares for a sploosh pendulum elbow. Then a super, comma, kick party. The street fighter with a spin kick, spooge accurate back of the head kick. I love that kick. Oh, it's yeah, yeah, so good. awesome. Springboard kick, hoosh him into the cage and running kopu kick. Ares retaliates with a triple hit combo, atomic shin drop, clatter off the cage door and down onto the mat. 
follows up with a running dropkick and Ric Flair foot on the ropes pin, but Backlund has none of it. My favourite spot from the whole match, uh, Austin Aries does a top rope backbreaker and follows it up by rubbing his nipples. <laughs> ah, my nipples! They're so hard, my nipples! Ah, oh, they hurt when I twist them! <laughs> Senshi, with a running Balor dropkick, sets up for the Warriors' way double foot stomp, but Ares pushes Backland into him and capitalises with a gorgeous 450 splash. What a fucking in-ring wrestler. He's great. Smooth like butter. <laughs> Only garners a two, and a furious star chews out Backland. This pisses off Bob, who threatens to finger him, and shoves him. <laughs> Bob shoves him into Senshi's roll-up cradle, 4-3 to three in 9.57. Did you like Aries making sure the people in the last row in, in the audience saw that he was upset about the counting? Being too slow? He's like, one, two. No, I like <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, great match. Similar to last month. Great spots. They work so well together. Nice to have uh, old uh, Bobby B in there as well. Big Bobby B. Big Bobby B. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, morale was really low in TNA at the time, as they just stopped paying for talents, hotel and car hire, and sabotaged Ring of Honor's first pay-per-view by not allowing their talent to take Ring of Honor bookings anymore, mm. including ones they've already announced ahead of time and sold tickets for. Aries had one foot out the door at this point. He was suspended for 90 days, just a few days after lockdown, for perceived attitude problems. By attitude problems, he wouldn't film vignettes or promos outside of taping dates. Yeah, pay him for it. Yeah, fucking pay him a bit of scratch and he'll do it. Mm. And he did when they did, yeah. And he's probably a little bit salty over his horrific gimmick that's not getting him over and is hurting his future plans. You know what I mean? earning potential. Yes, yeah. Strike two was that he and other wrestlers detested the Bob Backlund angle. Strike three was pissing off management by wearing a Ring of Honor t-shirt to a lockdown fan event. I had a look at the fan fest and they didn't show any footage of him because oh. oh, I really wanted to see it. Like That would piss me off if I was in management. Yeah. Could you not also argue, like, why could they not just give him a fucking t-shirt? Yeah. You know, you know I'm sure if, like, WWE are doing... <laughs> 1995. <laughs> <laughs> Ares demanded and was granted his release so he could go back to Ring of Honor. So ends the ballad of A Star Is Born. A star, A dot star <laughs> is born. <laughs> Can I ask you, Steve, what, um, comparing this Bob Backlund to like new generation Bob Backlund, what kind of percentage awesomeness is he working on now? He's like at a 10%. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. I never have ever eating marijuana he's he's the new Lex Luger gonna get him over yeah yeah watch Back this space. yeah I, I think, think a, I think we can do it Ace of Base might do <laughs> it <laughs> <laughs> you should be taking care of your children Samoa Joe <laughs> you're fine <laughs> He delivers his bum poke promo. Ah, uh, the old kanjo. <laughs> it's a, uh, uh, let's say, Japanese school children. They do their hands like guns and they poke each other in their anus. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, Why do they do that? It's prank, Stephen. Like, actually aim for the anus, yeah, not yeah, just that's, the they're, arse. They're like. trying to poke people in the anus, yeah. That's fucking disgusting. <laughs> yes. Isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Samoa Chow! <laughs> He's suspicious at Kurt's lack of communication and furious at Jarrett's untrustworthiness. He says that anyone that gets in his way of the title opportunity, he's going to murder them. Do you enjoy it? No, because like Steve ruined Joe promos for me. Years ago. What yeah. did you say? No, it's uh, I told him what, is, what every promo yeah. was. Yeah, just ruined it. Um, I figured out what it was. Krusty recording his catchphrases for a doll or whatever. You know, side show Mel, side show Mel. Such a Mel. Side show Joe. There you go. And he's ruined. There you go. <laughs> and that marks the halfway point of the show. It's time for the outbreak question. <laughs> Oh, 
Aloha, OSW Review. It's Chris, Bob, Dave, and Henry uh, from Laser Time, the Internet's seventh leading pop culture show, which has done many topics, including wrestlers and cartoons like Ren and Stimpy, uh, and bad cameos and otherwise great shows and movies. We're all big fans of OSW Review, especially the wrestling, but especially the Simpsons references. So we're most honored to be here. But enough fumbly bumbly. It's time for the ad break questionarium. The question is, which popular WWE wrestler appeared in a classic episode of The Simpsons? The answer, after the break. After a hard day at the office, working up a big thirst, many professionals reach for the smooth taste of Mellow Yellow. Woo, baby! Mellow Yellow, the taste that beats Mountain Dew. And now, Mellow Yellow has pictures and all the facts on your favorite NWA wrestlers. Ric Flair, Sting, the Road Warriors, and even my pretty face. Head to your favorite store and collect all 12. Woo! Take it for Dusty Rose the American Dream. Make the Mellow Yellow move. Before the break, we asked you which popular WWE wrestler appeared in a classic episode of The Simpsons. Could it be Andre the Giant, We Hardly Knew Ye? Or that freeze frame reference to Stone Cold Steve Austin in the Tamako episode? If you answered the next door neighbor to the shrieking cheek, Brett Hitman Hart, you're wrong. They were never popular. The answer is Muhammad Hassan, aka Osama Bin Rotten. Hope you enjoyed this spicy spicy right there, and congratulations if you got it right. Check out more of us at TalkingSimpsons.com or LaserTimePodcast.com. See you next time, and thanks for playing! We are back with match number five! <laughs> Wildcat Chris Harris versus Cowboy James Storm in a blindfold cage match. AMW, America's Most Wanted. I actually can't get over how big a deal this split was. These guys were tagging together since before TNA started and were put together on TNA's second weekly pay-per-view in 2002. They dominated TNA's tag division, winning the NWA tag title six times which is the most reigns in history, winning Gauntlet for the Gold, feuding with and beating New Church, Triple X, Kid Cash and Dallas, Team Canada and The Naturals. But after failing to dethrone LAX at December 2006's Genesis pay-per-view, had their big split when Storm smashed his beer bottle in Harris's face. So both, for the first time, were now singles competitors, Harris being out for months with a kayfabe eye injury to build up his big return and their first singles feud. Harris came back on Impact 22nd March and the showdown was on. So this is their first match together. Huge build up here. Lower those eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Yarr! laughs> Pirate Chris Harris tells a tale. How he's at 35% vision and may lose his sight completely. After he's been discharged. <laughs> <laughs> Just be a little bit careful when you're uh, dealing with chemicals there, yeah, young you Chris. Need a better hospital, mate. Like. <laughs> ah, he's risking his sight to wrestle again. And to even the odds, their bout will be a blind leading the blind. An eye for an eye, a blindfold cage match. James Storm enters and we see St. Louis Cardinals David Eckstein, whom I guarantee was only there just for that shot. They don't even have seats. It's like they're literally oh, shuffled in here. Yeah. They were like shepherded in, have your photo op and then get out. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like Edge and Beth Phoenix at uh, NXT. <laughs> 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 Wildcat, he's ripped here. You know, great shape. Especially like <laughs> comparing him to his WWE. <laughs> what was he thinking? Like, <laughs> he's bulking up, putting on masks. <laughs> He's cultivating mass. Yeah. Like, can you imagine going to the company that's run by Vince McMahon, who everyone knows spooges themselves over big, jacked guys, and going there in the worst shape of your life? I don't know. Maybe people got inside his head and told him he'd be nothing and he's joking, doesn't deserve to be here or something. And then he just said, yeah, you're right. Or he something. made it just... a self-fulfilling prophecy, though. You know, like he didn't give himself any chance at all. <laughs> I love it when he goes on the ramp and like, 
<laughs> like, you just debuted. <laughs> uh, at the time, he was actually in the doghouse in TNA for his, the dreaded uh, attitude problems. Very much a catch-all term for him. Yeah, we're gonna job you out, you know. Yeah, get on those blindfolds, and here we go. <laughs> Hang on, a blindfold match. These are not blindfolds. <laughs> They're hoods. <laughs> They're pillow sacks. You know. <laughs> There's no blindfold here. Actually, one, some knob in the crowd uses a t-shirt as a blindfold and does it. Yes. <laughs> well, he got on camera, didn't there he? There you go. Yeah. Bit of backstage ska. The original blindfolds were said to be really bad and obviously unusable. Hold on a sec. <laughs> there were worse blindfolds. <laughs> there were actual blindfolds. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the sacks used were made in a rush that afternoon. A staff member bought the sax and string, and Johnny Devine stepped in to create them. Get out. Decent job. Yeah. I know what's going to come next, but... But that's their fault. You see them pull on the fucking string, which tightens the hoods, right? Now, boys, tie the string. And they don't. Yeah. This is going to lead to a disaster. It does. <laughs> Kick off with Babyface Harris hugging the ropes like a heel, while Storm the heel walks into the unknown across the ring like a babyface. <laughs> Top psychology. <laughs> Least of your problems. <laughs> Do you think Harris could just feel his way to the door and leave? Can you leave this much? Why not? Like, It's never stated. Nope. Because the rules. When they start climbing the cage, Don West is like, are you going to go over it? Wait, are you asking me? Are you asking us? <laughs> <laughs> Ships in the night as they pass each other and almost touch bums. <laughs> so yeah, it's like the classic booking. You start off feeling around, then they have comedy spots and then they have a wrestling match. Oh, it can't work. This kind of match cannot work. Because this is a blood feud. Yeah. A blindfold match is a comedy distraction, you know? It's a bit of crack, and yeah. you shouldn't be having a bit of crack for yeah. this feud. Yeah. Know? So the crowd quickly turn on it with, we want wrestling. Yes. Yeah. Harris finally does a crowd point and takes down Storm. Throw to the ropes and Storm swings wildly, but Harris clocks him, knocking off his stupid <laughs> back. <laughs> <laughs> Chorus of disapproval and boring chants. Storm with a head hold rake. And snapping his head back, whips off the hood. <laughs> had a look, and the drawstring had come out, yeah. and it's on the ground now. So he, he's literally <laughs> holding a loose back. <laughs> he had to hold it for the match. It's so amazing. It's just the best. Cowboy is pissed and doesn't want to put it back on. Is there a DQ for remaining unbacked? Unsheathed? Yes. <laughs> There's nothing in the rules, so mm. do what you want. He puts on the bag in disgust. And, oh, when, like, the ref said, come on, come on, put it on. So he puts it on in disgust, and then he puts the bag on, and he goes, <laughs> I'm a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just like a big, stroppy teenager. Like, oh, if I fucking have to. It's brilliant. <laughs> Every move, I'm wondering if the bag will come off. <laughs> and you hoping, please, God, come off. <laughs> they climb up the cage. On a light punch, James is debagged and can fully <laughs> see. <laughs> but has to wait for Hooded Harris to do his spot. So James can see <laughs> Harrison Hood setting up for a big spear and just lets him do he it. just waits. <laughs> Would it have been better if, like, when his hood fell off, he just kept his eyes closed? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. If this happened, the crowd, they got real yeah. pissy. <laughs> per se. Per, per se. se. <laughs> what would you have given to being a fly on the wall backstage oh after this God. match? If this pay-per-view had like a live cam backstage that you could hear their audio. Take my fucking money, <laughs> yeah. Dixie. Seriously. That hood right back on the head of Storm. And then the cheap shot from Storm caught him with the knee. Exchange. Crowd with the end this now and someone stop this chance. <laughs> <laughs> Harris's bag gets in on the action and pops <laughs> off. <laughs> it was jealous, was it? <laughs> Uncle Slam, and now Rudy has to put on Wildcat's hood too. End this match. 
comedy finish where Harris sharpshooters referee Rude by mistake but feels his pants and shoes and not the fact that he's 70 pounds lighter <laughs> yeah. than James Storm and releases him. Cowboy seizes the opportunity by whipping off the bag, flipping off the wildcat and delivering a super kick and quickie rebagging to win in a lengthy excruciating 9.05. Hold up, hold up. It was only nine minutes? Wow. How did he know the ref was unconscious or on the floor or anything like that? Unless the ref was on, I'm on the floor, I'm on the floor, you know, how's he gonna know? Mm. So what do you think of this match? I loved it, for obvious reasons. <laughs> Fucking loved it. It was better than I had hoped. I hadn't seen this pay-per-view before. You've been talking to me about it for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, really good. I mean, I wasn't expecting the bags to come off. I thought it was more of a fimbly bimbly. So this is much better than the Fimbly Bimbly. <laughs> it's so much better. Isn't it? Isn't it? It's on a different level. It's it a is. different <laughs> universe to it. And when it came out for the first time, I was like, oh yes, I'm in for a treat. <laughs> it was so it didn't disappoint. It was it was great fun. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking loved it. It's a massive farce. It's shambolic. It's laughable. It's embarrassing. I'm sure both guys went backstage and were fucking mortified. And not only that, they accidentally ruined the finish of the match. Because when Storm takes off his mask, it's just one more time. But um, can't say enough good things about it. Loved watching it. Loved talking about it. Will want to watch it again in a few years. Everyone watch it. Um, A botch. A blunder. Calamity. A catastrophe. A disaster. A debacle. A farce. Failure. Flop and fiasco. In short, you gone fucked up. <laughs> Thank you, Vince Russo. <laughs> That's well, it. You enjoyed it. Oh, I fucking love this match. Mm. Don't want to throw around the word milestone. <laughs> <laughs> but but these, you will. Yeah, there's two milestones on this pay-per-view. Yeah. It's amazing. It is the perfect match to go back and review. Like, it's mm. so much fun. What an odyssey. <laughs> Why does this shit only happen to TNA <laughs> <laughs> and WCW? <laughs> Which is the same thing, but 10% the size. <laughs> like, has this, ha- has this bollocks happened in WWE? Like, Nothing wh- this bad. Like, when they have the, in TNA, when they have the contract on the ladder that they pull up, and, like, the actual contract <laughs> falls off the clipboard, and they have to fight for the, the clipboard. clipboard. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> As a positive, the match gained the accolade of the Wrestling Observer's worst match of the year. Over Electrified Cage? Yeah. It is worse Mm. than Electrified Cage. Yeah. This is grim. (laughs) (laughs) And the feud recovered by having an absolute belter next month at Sacrifice with a Texas death match. Awesome. Backstage, a forgiving Sting calmly accepts Kurt's choice to trust Jeff Jarrett, but reminds Angle that Jeff changed after Ben for Glory, which is when he lost his title to Sting. Trusting Sting, uh, as, as an adjective, trusting Sting, says that if Jarrett turns out bad, it'll be shame on him. Yes. Can you trust Jeff Jarrett? Does the Tin Man have a sheet metal cock? <laughs> I have to be able to sacrifice what I am for the sake of what I will become. Match number six, The Wrath of X. Chris Daniels versus... Jerry Lynn. (laughs) (laughs) Cool character vignette showcasing the new fallen angel character. One producer's note, I gotta sacrifice who I am for who I'll become. It's a bit non-committal, isn't it? I'm okay with it. Well, who are you? You know, who are you? you know? <laughs> I get the feeling they haven't worked it out yet. Okay. But that was always a problem with this character. He dresses up and he comes out, he's got cool music and a cool entrance. But then he turns into Christopher Daniels. The indie wrestler. wrestler. Mm. Yeah. And that's it. Like the gimmick never went anywhere. And that's a huge problem. Mm. The commentators quiz each other on his character and they can't explain it either. <laughs> uh, Steve, can you give us a bit of Jerry Lynn's theme? The pioneer of the X Division versus the man from the metaphorical city of angels, the fallen angel. 
Yes. As a drunk headbangs to his theme. <laughs> Jerlin yeah. kicks off with a St. Lou Thez Press. Fans haven't accepted healed Chris Daniels yet, despite the Neo approved pull the arm hold. <laughs> <laughs> Jay approved I dig. And I'm going to say V1 approved choke with the Cameron's cable. Why not? What's the OOC approved one? Taking oh, it's the, coming like, here. The fall, like. <laughs> <laughs> hey! And the OOC special, a chin hold that immediately goes magna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Such a half ass submission. Hold the chin. Fucking use your whole arse, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame him too much. The crowd were hit for six after that last match. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Daniels throws Lynn lightly against the cage. Yeah, it's a bit bockety, so try not <laughs> touch the cage, lads. They start bouncing off the ropes, and you can hear the cage just go chuck, 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 chuck. Oh, it's oh God. Fuck. You open a window a crack, he'll open it all the way. Yeah, this might be the opening he's looking for. Swing to miss with a clothesline by wow. Daniels. <laughs> Don't fall down. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. You just see looking Lenny eating his dinner. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Dixie's yes. like, please don't tell people how I do. <laughs> Lynn's Hurricane Runner. Oh, Matt, maybe the smoothest in the business. Holy shit. He's so fast. Like, he's not a young guy, but he wrestles, I'm sure, the exact same way he did 15, 20 years earlier. His laying the SmackDown float over DDT is a bit bollocks, though. Not a patch on the rocks. Daniels hits a standing rock bottom and into the best, best moonsault, moonsault ever. ever. But misses. <laughs> <laughs> and never mind, he slams Lynn's back into the cage corner and does a huge self rock bottom down to the mat. <laughs> the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is the move that finally gets the fans into the match. And they start to chant TNA and this is awesome. And I'm like, it's a self rock bottom. <laughs> the fucking state of it. Crowd perk up for the attempted top rope angel's wings and also the promise of a cradle suplex. This is what pisses me off. We know it's not going to happen. But Lynn is crutched on the way down so there's no big spot and the crowd boo. Yeah, damn rightly so. Don't fucking tease us. Don't promise a spot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Daniel's here finally got the crowd to boo. So maybe some successful heel heat, maybe? Mm. Kind mm. of, yeah. But like, that doesn't make up for like... Not having any spots in your entire match, mm. you know? Yeah. Crossroads, aka last rights, and that's the finish after 1329. Daniel's here, really uncomfortable in his new heel role. Like, he has no character flair that he does. You wouldn't know he's the fallen angel during the match. No. Uh, what do you think? I thought this match kicked off. It was really slow, very average, but it built up into a solid match. And I really do believe that these guys could have and should have had a much better match. But it still wasn't a bad match. It was all right. I enjoyed it. Two great wrestlers, but the feud wasn't built up enough for anyone to give it a good chance at the crowd being behind it. Very good wrestling. I mean, these two lads are obviously awesome. They worked well together. But yeah, it wasn't amazing. I expected more. We're backstage with Team 3D holding their WWF, WCW and ECW tag belts. How do they get away with this? Bubba pimps the electrified steel cage which used to be built to keep you people out. Now this one is to keep you people in. Eh? Wow, JBL yeah. would be proud of that one, wouldn't mm. he? They pledged to become 20 time tag team champions tonight. 20 times, as they got 8 in ECW, 8 in the WWF, 1 WCW, which is during the invasion in the WWF, 1 WWE Raw tag belt, and 1 in Hustle. That's 19. Number 20 would add the NWA championship to their resume. Can you really count Hustle as a world championship? No. And the WCW one doesn't count either. It was in the invasion. That does a not count. Federation, yeah. No. 
A better do tonight, as this is the last pay-per-view before TNA and the NWA part ways. Oh. See, at this point, the National Wrestling Alliance were a shadow of their former selves from the 80s. So TNA had control and booking power over the titles. That's crazy. Something even WCW didn't have. Even left the alliance in 2004, but kept the belts. NWA were cool with that until TNA weren't making their NWA champions available for the NWA to use. So with TNA having a far stronger brand name and a foothold in Spike, NWA just announced they officially parted ways the morning of the next pay-per-view, Sacrifice. Very happy with that. You know, I understand TNA using the NWA name and belts to kind of get themselves over. But once you reach a certain size, it really does hold you back. And fucking stay to your belts. (laughs) It was going straight to give out about that tumor belt. It's (laughs) horrific. Mm. And the TNA belts were always very, very sexy. Yeah, Mm. that's true. Match number seven is the historic electrified steel cage tag title match. It's the Latin American Exchange Champions versus Team 3D. (laughs) 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 It's 10,000 volts of violence. To get the gimmick over, Conan stun-gunned Spike Dudley with apparently 5,000 volts. Did you like the blue After Effects and sounds they had in the promo package? Oh my god, this promo package was hilarious. Has this been done before, Electrified Steel Cage match? They've done the Chamber of Horrors match in WCW yeah. where they... The electric fried, chair. Yeah, 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 yeah. Abdel the Butcher. And that went well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, 10,000 volts. Volts won't kill you. Volts are electric potential. You mean amps. Amps, That's yeah. electric current. Uh, 200 milliamps of it. Kill you. Backstage, Conan asks, Conan asks, what's worse? Meh. <laughs> Backstage. <laughs> <laughs> Backstage, Conan asks, what's worse? Watching a 3D match or listening to a Christy Hemi promo? What was with this? <laughs> Even feuding, <laughs> he's, just, he's just having a go. <laughs> awesome, he's so great. I love Conan. You go get the table. To that, that. It's like a broken record. I don't know what's worse watching one of your matches or listening to a Christy Hemi promo. Why is he not in the WWE just like cutting? Oh, not sure. He's like part owner of Triple A or something, yeah, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he never went to WWE. It's weird. Oh, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> Maximilian would say different. <laughs> Straight to the maybe moon. he maybe he left because his uh, <laughs> travel time was too great. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he buy an apartment on the moon? <laughs> Cheap rent. <laughs> Team 3D come out with their belts. Awesome. Are they replicas? Yes. <laughs> uh, one, the real thing. Two, would you trust TNA with the real belts? Mm. And three, Bubba just fucks them into the ring. Just hoofs them. Actually, the first one, he throws it out. It doesn't make it in. (laughs) So so they just cut the diva instead. (laughs) Big boxing style introduction for this match by JB. Earl has a stupid grin on his face. Sure, he'd help set up the ring. They tried this out earlier in the day. He definitely knows what's going to happen. What we're in for here. Oh, yeah. Bit of kayfabe. Electricity is apparently transmitted through a large water hose. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, though. They literally, the good junk. <laughs> <laughs> Not a cable, then. Yeah. Literally, turn on the juice. You know. <laughs> Question though. So the ref is is wearing his uh, gardening gloves. Uh, <laughs> would they help? They were like fabric. Mm. There's definitely an element of as long as your skin is not in contact with the electricity, you're fine. Okay. That's what it seems like they're going for here, which is a bad message to be sending, kids. <laughs> <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, electrify the steel cage! So the house lights are off, and we're using these light blue spotlights. Ah, uh, the same car gimmick. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. Cue the humming track to represent electricity <laughs> piped <laughs> yeah. over the PA system. <laughs> or it's just, you know, uh, JB backstage going, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't pay him enough for that. <laughs> but it got real annoying, so they just turned it off after 10 minutes. <laughs> Since the cage is electrified, 
no one's getting in or out, so it's a tornado tag. 3D must have been shitting themselves coming into this match because it's like, we can't walk and brawl. What'll we do? I know. Juice. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a big blue light and you won't be able to see it. I said juice. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nasty. Um, so we're kind of just setting up what this cage is. Sadly, originally, they also had spooters to oh shoot out sparks God. from the cage to signal being electrocuted. Yes. Yeah, so they yeah, dropped the spooters at the 11th there. Very sad. Well, you know, they had to spend the budget on the uh, black sacks. <laughs> <laughs> Got six dollars. Make it happen. <laughs> God help these commentators. Don West makes sure to note LAX have rubber boots. Tanae mentions there's alternating current, different levels of current running through the cage. What? So there's different levels of electricity in different parts of the cage. So if <laughs> the wrestlers hit off the cage and nothing happens, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> A wizard did it. <laughs> yes! Yeah, it's not literally like you can see the electricity moving around the different <laughs> uh, parts of the cage, just like a one line. And oh shit, I got hit by it. Oh yeah. Team 3D suplex Hernandez into the cage. No electricity. <laughs> Quick as a whippet, Wes says he touched the door only, so he's lucky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But hold on, is the door, what's the door made out of plastic? Like, that's. What's going on? It's door? not part of the circuit, Steve. Oh. OC's circuit breakers. <laughs> <laughs> if you will. Devon even goes outside the ropes to climb the turnbuckle for the way there. Earth banging off the cage. <laughs> yeah. Like, nothing. He got lucky that there was no electricity at that ah, point. There we go. Uh, if the cage is electrified, how come the cameramen are so close? <laughs> no hazard suits, no safety equipment. <laughs> Do you like the um, little red lights on the corners of the cage to indicate that electricity is going through the cage? Yes. It's like someone robbed children's bikes and got the reflectors (laughs) (laughs) and stapled them around. Awesome spot where Homicide tries to force Bubba's hand to touch the cage, but it's nowhere near the cage. So Bubba has to open his hand, his fingers to try to twinkle toes. (laughs) He's trying to get shocked. Amazing. Hilarious. I can tell you didn't like that spot. fans (laughs) (laughs) The fans <laughs> <laughs> homicide pulls off his glove to glove slap Bubba he just goes arr, arr, arr. he grabs it himself like no lights or sounds homicide just sells it himself <sighs> every time someone's Irish whipped into the ropes they hit the cage yep and nothing <laughs> ah fuck it Hernandez just gets to the top rope and grabs the cage <laughs> <laughs> to steady himself <laughs> They've been so careful so far, only a couple times his hands caught the electricity. Crowd starts to turn. And actually, I thought it took longer than I thought for the crowd to shit on this match. Uh, Yeah, well, you know, in all fairness, they didn't do much until they got to the point where you couldn't hide the bollocks anymore. (laughs) (laughs) It's just bollocks right in your face. <laughs> we laid Conan and Latino Nation thug clocks the ref to unlock the door, but Hector Guerrero has none of that. And he wards Conan off, who kind of just like reverses up the ref. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Dudleys are out of fucks to give. Bubba bellows at Hector, give me the fucking table. <laughs> Hector, forget it! Give me the fucking table! Well, oh! you just heard. Is it this is as after, loud as possible? This is after Hector opened the door. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, but the door is not electrified, so. Ah, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's okay. Doodly device. <laughs> Booby <laughs> box. <the> doodlies. <laughs> and Devin Doodly. <laughs> and massive lie down power bombed homicide. Loved it. But Hernandez border tosses Devon into the steel cage and. <laughs> <laughs> The crowd immediately shit on it. <laughs> and he throws it right in the oh, God! Right in and he just felt the electricity sap him. He sent him shot. airborne and you saw that. The, the alternating current. Devon, he sells it. Like he swabs like a fish. <laughs> Whatever he is, he's so electrified, you know. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, you can see right now, Homicide going after... Booze and Fire Russo chants. 
you know, I, I don't want to make a habit of defending Vince Russo, but the blindfold match was Russo's idea. This match was Dutch Mantel's. Really? Or is that just what Russo tells us because he can't have the blame for both? <laughs> so at this point, uh, although Jared was head of creative, he took a step back. So it was really Russo in charge um, because his wife was quite sick. She just, like died of breast cancer like yeah. a couple of days after this, you know. Um, so Russo would have been the guy doing this stuff, you know. But Dutch Mantel, he, he's the guy to commend for this. Like, hitch up your jocks. <laughs> it's time for the finish. Now... Is there a kayfabe reason for, hitching for up your Bubba jokes? Ray not wearing a belt because he doesn't want the metal of his belt to touch the electrified cage? Brilliant. Do you like it? Yes. Yeah. He could have used a cord or something. Shut up, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's true because there were two floating about from an earlier match. <laughs> Hernandez sets up Devon on the table puts on supposed rubber gloves allowing him to climb the cage no problem. This is like a magic item in a Zelda dungeon where you just accept the logic. Wear these Pegasus boots. You can run really fast now. You know, here's Titan's mitt. You can lift up huge rocks. This logic where he puts on rubber gloves and that's it. And he's he's immune. immune. Yeah. Just drink a fucking yellow potion now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he climbs the cage, but the door fucking swings open because they close it afterwards. Oh, Jesus Christ. He scooch straddles the cage so he can get up and perform a huge splash off the top. I thought it looked awesome. Yeah, it was mm. great. He yeah. was did the old... We're to hold right over. Right over. 300, this is a 300 pound no. man! Oh, oh, God, he crack it right into the table! But Devon moves out of the way and he crashes through a table. No replay, of course. And then DW barks, the rubber souls, the rubber souls. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying so hard to save this abortion of a match. Oh. I was actually thinking the next five seconds is the most perfect distillation of TNA bollocks. <laughs> Homicide is alley-ooped onto the cage. <laughs> noise, and the lights ah, flicker. The lights flicker. And he was supposed to fall back into a 3D, which would have been really impressive. But they botch and it just fumbled to the ground. Aww. And it's like, yeah, let's repeat the finishing mm. spot. Let's <sighs> throw him against ropes. 3D gets the pin. And mercifully, the match is over in 1536. Oh, yeah. Team 3D, new NWA tag champions. Their record 20th title reign from the winning bell to cutaway backstage was 38 seconds. Sure, we didn't even see them with the belts. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Where's your photo op for the four belts? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, God, TNA. They so, were like, we didn't have the hustle belts. So, ah, we can't do it. It's <laughs> no good now. Oh, you know, but we have to go backstage for the 12th yeah. promo about Jeff Jarrett and who, who started <laughs> yeah. him on. Uh, what do you think? Pure bollocks. This match could have been a five-star all-time classic. And that also wouldn't matter. Because what matters? The embarrassment, the fans turning, the <laughs> Seriously, this is one of the most cringy wrestling moments in history. It could only have happened in TNA. And I pity the guys involved. I pity the fans that paid. I pity everyone. Pity the fool, Steve. Uh, but I wouldn't change a thing. It's also perfect. I love it. <laughs> um, well... Fucking wow. <laughs> no words. A milestone matchup. I love that Bubba takes this really personally and hates talking about it. It gets real thick if you mention it too. Um, yeah, fantastic. I loved it. Obviously, it was bollocks and it was terrible, but it's the best. It is. It's an absolutely massive event. <laughs> In OSW. <laughs> <laughs> what did you prefer, this or the blindfold? Ah, that's tough, Steve. Mm. That is a tough... That is Bubba's choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's They both bring different uh, elements to the party, you know, so... I think the blindfold match was a disaster. Like, yeah, it, it did fail what they were trying for, but this match went exactly how yeah. they set it up to be. <laughs> <laughs> it was textbook. <laughs> Jay, that is a damning point you've just made right there. Yeah. <sighs> oh... JB tells Kurt the backstage scuttlebutt is that he called Jarrett out of desperation. Angle is furious about the word desperation and not the word scuttlebutt. 
should they trust Jeff Jarrett? Have you seen his cash for gold scheme? <laughs> <laughs> this is no better time to do this. Jeff Jarrett, the carniest carny. Hey, this is Jeff Jarrett, and welcome to GlobalForceGold.com. Global Force Gold is a promotion for Carrot Bars, which is a German company that trades in mostly gold, lambasted for being a Ponzi scheme. It's not a Ponzi scheme. You just buy gold off them at inflated prices, and then they encourage you to recruit new people to get benefits. <laughs> but it's not a Ponzi scheme, right? No, it's a pyramid scheme. Well, it's, it's not a pyramid scheme. Our business model is a trapezoid. <laughs> <laughs> Their video has since been taken down from YouTube for scams and deceptive practices. Really? Yeah. Wow. Is this still going, or was it quickly swept under the rug and... Oh, I tried to get into it. You can't get into it anymore. It's you, been quietly drawn. You drunk. tried to buy <laughs> gold. Oh, were you going to force this on me and Steve? Because <laughs> the way Jared had it is like you sign up for carrot bars and he'll send you an 8x10. And give a certain amount of money guarantees you a GFW world championship. <laughs> <brain. laughs> like the idea of pyramid schemes is ingenious. Illegal. But ingenious. It's ingenious for the person at the top. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And even the people several levels below that. Yeah. Yeah, you never get the gold anyway. Like, I watch TNA, like, Jarrett never drops the gold. (laughs) (laughs) Do you reckon the belt for GFW was made from card bar gold? (laughs) 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 The side plates are a little eight by (laughs) ten. You fucking carny. Scumbag. Unbelievable. Still love you, Jeff? Yes. Still yeah, love look, you. Yeah, look, he could do this and more and we'd still back him he up. He has done this <laughs> and more. <laughs> <sighs> and that must mean it's time for a main event. Sit back, enjoy, learn about gold, and watch the video now. It's your main event, match number eight in a cage. It's Lethal Lockdown, Team Cage versus Team Angle. Lethal Lockdown? Yes. Think war games in half the space with weapons. (laughs) Weapons, you say. Barry Scott tells us not only is it legal, but a necessity. (laughs) As they hang from the ceiling. The build-up I really liked, because right after Destination X, Cornette announces that the main event of Lockdown is a five-on-five lethal lockdown, Team Angle versus Team Cage, and it's up to the captains Kurt and Christian to spend the next couple of weeks recruiting the rest of their team. Heel Team Cage came together easy enough. Christian helped AJ beat up Rhino, so he's in. Cage is already buddies with Steiner and Tomko as the Christian Coalition. So the last member, drafting Abyss was tough, as Sting was vying for the monster's rebellion and face turn, saying he saw the light after last rites. Jim Mitchell (laughs) had none of that, bringing out Abyss's mom, some sweet old lady, and that overwhelmed Abyss, making him comply and become the final member of Team Cage. On the flip side, Angle recruited Rhino and Joe, but that's it. Three on five is a death sentence. Schmozzing with Team Cage, the lights go out. Ersting! Recruit number four, but we're still missing a fifth. Impact before lockdown, it's AJ versus Joe. Jeff Jarrett shows up, never draws a dime, and motions face! Face! (laughs) No, I am the fifth man. (laughs) And that's it. So Team Cage is Christian, AJ, Tomko, Steiner, and Abyss. Versus Team Angle, which is Kurt, Rhino, Joe, Sting, and Jarrett. Out first is the keeper of the cage, the outside enforcer, who will stop any run-ins, Missouri's King Harley Race. Stop any run-ins? <laughs> <laughs> He's a decrepit old that, man. Like. That would seem to me that they are inferring the Harley race is going to run after people <laughs> running in. I saw him walk down. That's not happening, lads. And all of the people who could interfere are already yeah, in, in the, the fucking cage. Yeah. Hmm. This bruiser comes out with his knacker tattoos, sneakers, borstal home schoolboy <laughs> blue slacks, and a duck patterned polo shirt. <laughs> yeah, he looks so bad. You get used to the legend showing up in WWE and tuxedos and an evening wear. 
Jesus Christ. Yeah. But like, does he not have any self-respect? <laughs> <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, let the lethal lockdown begin. So it's a five on five matchup. The first two get five minutes alone. <laughs> and after that, every two minutes, alternating team members come out, the heels first every time, as is tradition, as it should be. Putting your hand in the pudding, <laughs> as is tradition. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. <laughs> it's AJ versus Angle starting off. DW commends both teams' strategy of putting out their best conditioned athletes out first. Can't argue with that. Also, subtle heel face nod as Angle is the babyface captain and he leads the team coming mm. out first, whilst cowardly heel Christian does the exact opposite. Great. Comes out last like a big fucking coward. Kick off as Angle tries to shoot on AJ, who jumps out of the way and marks out to himself. Yeah. Ton of crane shots showing how nasty the ring is with Dexter level blood spatter. Yeah. It was gross. It's the fucking Dudleys, man. Angle slam to AJ just in time for It's Abyss. He hits the black hole slam. Bag of ham. Rest in peace. Yeah, he like comes out, batters curd, and then Then of course he does his uh I love it. Cut to a shot of Harley Race wandering aimlessly outside. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Next in is Gore. 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 The War Machine Rhino. It's two on two and the baby faces take control as Rhino catapults AJ into the cage and himself an angled double shoulder block abyss. Third member of Team Cage is Tomko, who was halfway down the ramp when his theme hit. Test Big Boot. Yes. British Bulldog running power slam. Yes. AJ's decided to blade. Rhino's bladed too. Actually, he makes it real obvious as he just lays face down on the mat with his hands at his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking carnies. Team Angle's Samoa Joe evens the numbers game. Joe looked awesome. Killed everyone. Got all his moves over. Looked great. And I was just watching it going like, man... TNA always booked Joe so well. They put him over brilliantly. And then it dawned on me, no, wait, they put a dick on his face. <laughs> <laughs> what am I talking about? <laughs> but here, he was great. Yes. Scott Steiner comes out. He takes back control for the heels. Steiner hits a top rope Frankensteiner. What the what? hell? <laughs> what? what the hell? Scott Steiner! Everyone goes mental. And rightfully so. So what? I didn't understand why people were going mental over Imagine this. Imagine if Harley Race hit a Frankensteiner. <laughs> <laughs> I would be incredibly shocked. But Scott Steiner invented this move. But I don't think he'd done it in a long oh, yeah? time. And he follows up with a lovely signature booming to Jimmy to Kurt Angle. Who's next from Team Angle? Team Angle's number four is the Icon Sting. So by this point, you can see the great simple story of the match. The heels are in control when they have the extra man advantage, but the baby faces win when the odds are even. Mm. Although this kind of booking goes out the window by the end. Hey lads, let's do a six-man pyramid spot. Mm. AJ, you're the flyer. Great spectacle car crash bump and everybody cheers. Unreal! Wait a minute, look at oh! oh my god! Just in time for the final member of Team Cage. The final participant for Team Cage. It's the NWA World Champion, instant classic Christian Cage. Sting takes him to school with a Sting a splash and Scorpion Death Drop. No submissions yet. Time for the final participant. For the lethal lockdown. The fifth and final entrance. It's Jeff Jarrett. Oh my god. Did you catch this? He walks out and his guitar is already broken. It's awesome. amazing, yeah. <laughs> his guitar spooter blew off the back of his guitar. 
<laughs> oh, I love this company. So seriously, I'd gladly turn OSW into the TNA podcast because it's just, it doesn't stop giving. It was very good. <laughs> I, I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> Jarrett does some odd trainee wrestler drop kicks and delivers the stroke to AJ. The roof, which has the weapons, descends on the cage and the final portion of lethal lockdown begins. Pinfalls are eligible now and he who gets it gets the title match next month. Jeff Jarrett came right in and look at this. He's finally with the team. Jarrett shows he's part of the team by brawling with the heels and retrieves weapons for the baby faces. He throws a bat to the stinger. Then a big boss man nightstick to Joe because he doesn't have a signature weapon. He doesn't have his knife yet. Oh, that's true, the machete! Yeah. <laughs> and Jarrett gets a trash can lid for himself. Fucking hell, he repeatedly smashes it over Steiner's head without resistance. Yeah. He just, dun, 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 dun. fuck, you know? Double gun salute, but AJ low blows angle and decides to get on the roof of the cage. Kurt climbs to meet him. He's not quite as sprightly as AJ, man. AJ is <sighs> up there like that. Yeah. He is agile. I was like, AJ and TNA, he is renowned for taking these high bumps and nobody fucking catching him. It's like, does it happen tonight? Let's find out. Harley Race <laughs> does, his, <laughs> <laughs> does his one spot of sucking Jim Mitchell to shoo him away. Why? What was Jim Mitchell doing? He was considering interfering in the match. Is that not just like breaking the law? He's just breaking the law. assaulting this man. But but well, how was get away from my TV dinner? <laughs> <laughs> how was Jim Mitchell going to interfere in the match? And he's allowed to be outside. He's got yeah. a manager's license. Yeah. And what's he going to do? Put a weapon into that, the ring? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's two dozen in there. <laughs> Did you catch this with Joe and Tomko? Joe has real trouble getting the guitar off the fishing line. Yes. <laughs> so, and he just drops it. <laughs> yeah. And gives up. <laughs> fuck's sake <laughs> and then he just like jumps off the rope and takes a bump <laughs> like, what the fuck was that yeah clear the ring let's bring it home rhino gores tomcat through the door and outside the cage great spot by the way yes steiner walk and brawls rhino out after him joe suicide dives a recovering tomco then Abyss sprinkles tax onto the mat but Sting and Jarrett double choke slam Christian down on them Black hole slam! Bag of ham! To Jarrett, but Abyss kindly completely misses the tax. On top of the cage, AJ and Kurt brawl to the corner as the lads flock into position below. Angle punch and AJ somersaults off the cage and down to the floor. Fucking crazy bump! Holy shit. That's dangerous as fuck. However, bad camera angles. They knew this was happening. They caught Gail Kim's botch of yeah. easy enough. Quick enough to catch her fucking fanny on camera all night. <laughs> the wrestlers catch him, thank you, and the crowd flip out as Angle double birds AJ go rah, rah, rah. Yeah, rah. yeah. That was awesome. Moment of truth. Not just a story plot point, but the name of a Jesus movie starring Sting. <laughs> Abyss funnels tax into the sound hole of the guitar, loading it up, and Jarrett has the opportunity to clock Sting, but motions him aside to clock Abyss. And what's more, tells Sting to make the fall so he can get the title shot, which he does. A suspicious Sting picks up the win for Team Angle in 2804 and will go to sacrifice to face Christian. A bewildered Stinga, who won despite doing almost nothing in the match, reluctantly shakes hands with J.E.F.F. Joe, too, despite shouting earlier how he'd murder anyone who got in his way of a title match. All the baby faces are happy with Jeff, except Kurt Angle, the guy who brought him in and staked his reputation on him doing exactly what he ended up doing. Weird. But why? <laughs> Someone explained this ending to me. I'm completely baffled. It makes no sense. Find out on Impact. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got me. Or don't. <laughs> <laughs> what a night it's been! Sting ends up winning late the lockdown! Sting gets the title shot against Christian next month at Sacrifice! Hey, what do you think of this match? The opening couple of minutes were awesome. Angle and AJ are so good that they make a shoulder charge into an amazing spot. 
Angle just running full fucking pelt. AJ doing a Kishi bump looks great. I thought the middle portion was filler. It was just a waste of time. Once all of the guys were in the ring and the teams were full, the cage lowered down. I thought the match really picked up. The last three or four minutes were fucking awesome. Just spot after spot after spot. Tomko getting speared through the door. Joe doing the suicide dive onto Tomko. Um... <laughs> Harley Race punching <laughs> Sinister <laughs> Minister AJ's massive bump fucking great but I'm completely baffled by the actual finish but overall very very good match yeah really enjoyed it I like the concept of this match you got war games you got Hell in a Cell Elimination Chamber going on I like the roof coming down at the end it adds an, another element to it but during the match people coming in Somebody else comes in, somebody else, so what? You're just hanging around waiting for the last person to come in. But, yeah, I enjoyed the whole thing, really. Was, okay, there was a bit of a lull, but not to the extent that I got bored. Mm. I enjoyed this match way more than I thought I would, as it had a simple, straightforward booking, kept up the pace between points of interest, and the possible Jarrett heel turn was built up all night. And with Russo, you expect the swerve, and the swerve was, there was no swerve, you know? <laughs> This was a plunder match, and it really helped out that a lot of the undercard matches didn't use the cage, as backwards as that sounds at an all-cage pay-per-view. Um, not memorable, but thumbs up, you know, and thanks for catching AJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that ends the pay-per-view. Let's take it to the aftermath. Welcome to the Aftermath. V1, what did you make of the pay-per-view? I enjoyed the show. I thought it was a very easy watch. There were no really bad matches on it. There was massive amounts of bollocks, (laughs) but that was really entertaining. There were some really awesome things. The opening match was very entertaining. The guns, fucking awesome. Love it, just marked out. The women had a good match for the time. Enjoyed the camel toe. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> TNA blindfolds <laughs> yes <laughs> I love the fans pissing all over the purse electrified hey. cage match don't piss on an electrified <laughs> cage by the way and I love the opening and the end to the main event and there wasn't really much that I didn't like I didn't like Bob Backlund kind of pissed off by how fast the opening match ended but that didn't take away from the really good wrestling and spots I didn't enjoy the middle section of the main event. But yeah, overall, really enjoyed it. Recommend it. Absolutely recommend this show. You sh- you should watch this show. Yeah, I... Well, the way you lads have been talking about it, I was expecting it to be a terrible pay-per-view. It's not at all. Obviously, those two bollocks matches, which are really enjoyable in their own right. But outside of that, there's a couple of okay matches, a couple of good matches, the, and the main event is uh, surprisingly good. So I would definitely recommend it. And not just the bollocks match, just watch the whole pay-per-view. Really enjoyable. So, uh, hire Russo. (laughs) (laughs) I thought two halves of the pay-per-view, Rude, Senshi, Gail Kim and Lin's matches were pretty forgettable. No decent promos either, aside from Conan's quip. Completely unnecessary (laughs) burial of Christy (laughs) Abbey. But the other four matches... The X Division Escape match was nonchalant work of art. The main event pleasantly over delivered. And the last two Russo's blindfold and Mantel's electrified cage. Massive failures. Abject misery for the fans, but the best for me personally. <laughs> um, if you can't be great, suck really, really bad. The worst would be being forgettable, being average, you know. I had a blast. Overall, I'd say skip the boring stuff, but, you know, blindfold, botchy-watchy, and uh, electrified steel cage. That's a milestone. That's required viewing for your wrestling edification. I was thinking, like, uh, thumbs so far down, it wraps around the world. <laughs> and goes up, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Unless the earth is flat, <laughs> AJ. <laughs> he doesn't believe this, does he? <laughs> 
know, he was having a fight with Daniel Bryan on Talking Smack. And Daniel Bryan is like, well, shut up, AJ. You think the earth is flat. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and he's like, oh, shut up. Your, your feet are flat, you know? Yeah, well, they are, but you believe the earth is flat. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and I bet you he's like really pushy about that backstage but then you put him on national television and he's like yeah. but if you if you're embarrassed stupid. about that you obviously don't believe it then he actually says like okay i don't think the earth is flat but there is something to it <laughs> what does that even mean <laughs> it means you're embarrassed about saying the earth is flat oh that's like, god stop aj you're not doing yourself any favors here the the shame of georgia here you know? <laughs> <laughs> the shame of Georgia. <laughs> uh, so, before we wrap up for the evening, let's hit the wrestling is. Awesome segment. You've been involved in some really great angles like NWO, Horseman and Flair, Luger. Do uh, do do people recognize you when you, you you know wash? You here to talk about fashion? Or you here to talk about wrestling? He said he liked the looks of the two big guys on the left of the picture. Now that was me and Hellwig. does it for this week folks episode 64 is on the books in the pocket out of sight this is halfway through our TNA story arc how do you feel about That's, TNA it's a good one. I am enjoying it very much so hmm. yeah like um, these are great shows great wrestling great bollocks easy to watch as well yeah that goes a long way for us I mean we're the guys putting in fucking three hours work a month here <laughs> <laughs> So you can catch all of our episodes Fuck. free of charge in an IMAX flavored 43 full screen at oswreview.com. And if you're feeling feisty, you can drop us a couple of bucks on Patreon at doggeru.oswreview.com. And you can catch some exclusive <laughs> videos. I was very angry. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little, never mind what it was. <laughs> <laughs> And you can catch some awesome videos like our new Aliens review. Alien review. Spoilers for next one for Aliens. <laughs> um, so it's a goodbye from OSC. Pretty deep. And V1. Take a boo. And myself, Jay Hunter. Remember. Beautiful. <laughs> Well done, well now, done, sir. Do the Bartman. <laughs> <laughs> we will never speak of the Bartman as even. Remember, a winner is you. <laughs> 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 hey, AJ, do you want to talk about how you think the Earth is flat? Do you want to talk about how your feet are flat? They are flat, <laughs> but like he legitimately it, thinks the earth is I flat. I do not think the world is flat. I'm just saying there's some stuff about it.